and we're going to put a, an album of photos from this event, but also some of the photos that have been running in the slideshow up on that site in a public al album so everybody can get to it. You don't have to be a Facebook member in order to see the, uh, see the pictures. And then we're going to be loading the, YouTube, uh, loading the video on YouTube as soon as we can get it produced. So once again, thank you for coming. It's great to see a full room. It's great to see so many people that, that, uh, that I worked with back in the day and, and have great respect for and, and great love for. And thanks for coming. Hi, my name is Barbara Blanchard and I am Dom, John's former daughter-in-law. He used to tease and say, how come I had one son and two daughter-in-laws? And that was because um, Hal and I grew close in, as teenagers and grew apart. And we separated and had a wonderful friendship and four wonderful children. And I stayed very close to the family. And then uh, Hal remarried the love of his life, Linda Blanchard. And then um, he had an untimely death at 49 years old. Mm -hmm. And John was at his bedside at the time of the death. So Linda and I partnered raising the children and also caring for John and Evelyn as their daughters-in-law while each of us was um, former and widowed. In any case, we are very, very wonderfully um, thankful for all of you giving the tribute to him. Uh, if you think that he did innovative things, you should see what it's like to unpack his house. <laughs> I am the trustee of his estate, and uh, so it is, is up to me to try to do things, and there's been some innovative fixes. So he, he continued with that, that genius in him. Speaking of the, um, the leaded glass, I think there's probably 80 homes in Friendly Valley, his retirement community, that have his beautiful artwork. My mother also has one of his beautiful doors that he's done. The Palladino family is here. Uh, John's brother Tony is here with his family and we have an extended family, very, very um, fortunate and all loved and honored John. I had the privilege of becoming part of this family, not um, through immediate marriage, but I was in Immaculate Heart High School and I babysat part of John's family. And I will be introducing one of the little boys I used to babysit, who is now an accomplished professional himself. And then following him will be my four children, who are John's grandchildren. And they will give little snippets, and I am timing them, so I promise we won't go too long. Um, they will give little snippets of what it was like to be the grandchild of John Palladino. It, it's really quite remarkable, because uh, you're right. He would say, do you want to go to Santa Barbara for breakfast? Meet me at the airport. I mean, so there was no end to the kind of surprises that were in our life, having him in our life. So well, thank you for your wonderful, wonderful words. Um, after my four children finish, then Tracy will be coming up to give the closing um, words for this event today. So it is my priv privilege and pleasure to introduce the little boy that I babysat, which is John's nephew. Um, his sister, Rose, had two sons, and I used to babysit Michael and Billy. And Billy Borden is here today, and he's going to speak a little bit about um, the family and his memories. Billy. She asked if you could call me Billy, and I said, well, everyone still does. So it's okay. <laughs> you know, uh, we were raised in a kind of an Italian family, and, and I'm looking at this, and this is really John right here. This is so, it was, we were Italians, you know, and it was really, it was really uh, that influence. And, uh, but the weird thing is, and I'm not sure, I think I might be the only family member that speaks Italian. <laughs> because when I was growing up, everyone, when my parents were, John was growing up, they weren't really allowed to speak Italian in the house. And by the time I was growing up with my grandfather, I grew up with him and we were again allowed to speak Italian. But John was very Italian and I think that that was part of his music connection. If you look at Frank Sinatra, you know. The, 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 the family was, uh, the Italians were very cloistered. And in fact, when I, um, just a little story, when I was starting to be I, I'm a movie producer, and when I started my first job as a movie producer, um, 
It was a movie called Against All Odds. And um, I told my grandfather, I went to his table. He had a table in the back. We used to drink red wine together by our house. And I said, Grandpa, I'm going to be a movie producer. I would, I'd already been in the business a while. And he said, and one of the older guys sitting there said, hey, Bill, that's really good, the movie producer. You should be an art director, though, or something, you know, creative. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, I'm going to be a movie producer. And he said, um, well, if you ever have a problem, for $25, we can solve it. <laughs> so that was the family. That was the family. Um, but um, I don't have some great speeches about John. He was my inspiration for a lot of things. Um, when I grew up with him, he was the guy with the red Porsche. And that was pretty neat when you were growing up to have a red Porsche. How old was it? What was it, 60 something? 1970. 1970. Anyway, he had the red Porsche, and I drove it. It was great. But. Um, <laughs> In fact, I was a little jealous when he did pass away. I thought, oh, God, I'd like to put that Porsche in my driveway. But, I, but it's okay. <laughs> but um, I, I just, a few shotgun ideas here, a few memories. One was his cabin. John used to take us up to his cabin. When I was little, I used to sit in, the, in a window seat in his cabin, and I would read comic books for hours. John had a large comic book collection. And I think that inspired me as a storyteller. John also collected every day, every Sunday, for six years, he collected the front page of the LA Times comic section with Tarzan on the front and Prince Albert on, Prince Albert on the back. Valiant. Prince Valiant on the back. And uh, somehow I ended up with that collection. Um, I've had it for about 40 years. It's, it, I still have it. Um, and of several times, I many years ago when I was starting my career, I used to go to the studios with it, say, let's go make a movie of Tarzan. I never got it made, but that was an inspiration to me. Um, John was uh, an incredible craftsman. He was amazing. And I brought today something he gave me. <laughs> and it's hard to see. You can pass it around. When John was 16 or 15 years old, he made this little thing. It says, some of the weapons used in the Lady of the Lake. He did it for a school project. And there were little weapons he carved. You could you'd pass them around. I have kept that for forever. You know, I can't remember when he gave it to me, but it was a long time ago. And it is actually kind of an inspiration. It was an inspiration to me. <laughs> And I am a builder. I make bowls. I'm a woodworker. Our grandfather, his dad was a woodworker, an amazing woodworker. And, um, and I think John inherited part of this, and I definitely inherited it. Part of this thing is that we're makers. We're Italians. We make things. And uh, one time, the last time I saw John, I was having lunch with him, and we were talking, and it might have been the interview that you were doing, but uh, we were talking about him working with Frank Sinatra, and he said, yeah, I just, I just had this guy here that was interviewing me about Frank Sinatra, and they wanted to know about the recording session, you know, of My Way, or one of the recording sessions. And he said, he even asked me, you know, like, what I have for lunch? And he goes, we were working. <laughs> we weren't making art. I mean, we were making art, but we were working. He said, that's what we were there. We were there working. That's what we were doing. And that's kind of been his inspiration to me. And he was someone who did do stained glass. He did, you know, did woodwork and metalwork. And he had, I, I had some another piece, and I don't know where it went. He made a tray for my mother out of metal. And uh, but he was a worker, and it, and it was an inspiration to me. And um, I'll end up here, but I uh, I make movies, I make albums, I make records, not albums anymore. But my first step into the entertainment industry was in this room. I was about 10 years old and John invited me in to sing back up on a record. It basically ended my singing career. That was it. In fact, I just told my wife the story. She never heard it on the way here and she goes, that ended your career for sure. I mean, I don't ever get it. It's no way anyone's going to let you sing after that. Actually, I did sing one other time after that on an album. But um, I, we came in here and he it, it looks different, but we're in Studio A, and we recorded an album. It had to do with Americana music, and they needed some kids singing on the background, and I did it. And I remember after, you know, 
I don't know how many attempts. He took me over to piano over here and he sat me down and he, you know, like C, sing a C, D, sing a D, F, sing an F. And he looked at me and I use this line all the time. He said, uh, Bill, when you sing, you got to sing on key. <laughs> And I say that, as my kids know, if you sing in my house, you gotta sing on key, you gotta sing on key. But, so I, I recorded that when I was like, I don't know, 10 years old or something, I came. And then um, I was asked, and I don't, wouldn't do this, but I've been asked to say what I do. So I, I started making movies, I made a bunch of movies, I made like, with a lot of music in them, La Bamba, White Knights, Against All Odds, and then I really wanted to make a musical. And over years, I could never get the studios to buy me one, and eventually I, I wrote my own and it was called High School Musical. I don't know if anyone knows yeah, High School sure. Musical. But, uh, um, I, so I produced all those and produced the music, and it was, you know, started with John. So thank you.